Sweden's Saab Gripen is forcing a conversation the defense establishment hates having. The narrative has long been that only the most technologically advanced, most expensive fifth-generation fighter can secure a nation's skies. Yet, the Grapen's continued success and smart evolution present a starkly different reality. This is not a story of a second-rate jet. It is the story of a highly capable, cost-effective, and strategically brilliant alternative that exposes the F-35's most glaring weaknesses. The Grapen is not a show horse designed for air shows and political photo ops. It is a workhorse. Let's cut through the noise and talk dollars and cents because in defense procurement, the budget is the ultimate arbiter of strategy. The sticker price is where the comparison begins and it is a stark one. While both the F-35A and the Gripen E can be found with flyaway costs in the 80 to 90 meter range, this figure is often misleading. The F-35's associated costs, from specialized ground equipment to infrastructure upgrades and initial spare parts packages, often inflate the real acquisition cost significantly. Saab, on the other hand, has built its export model on offering more transparent, all-inclusive packages that often bundle training initial support and weapons making the upfront investment far more predictable for budget-conscious governments. The real killer, however, is the operational cost. This is the metric that determines how often you can actually fly the jets you buy. A single Saab Gripen E can be acquired for an estimated $85 million, while a Lockheed Martin F-35A's flyaway cost hovers around the same figure but often with a much higher life cycle price tag. More critically, the Gripen E's cost per flight hour is estimated to be under $10,000 for some operators, while the F-35s is still stubbornly stuck above 36000 with a target of 25000 remaining an aspirational goal. For a country like Canada, which faces the monumental task of patrolling the world's second-largest landmass and the immense expanse of the Arctic, these numbers are not just details on a spreadsheet. They represent the fundamental difference between having a credible, persistent air presence and owning a small fleet of exquisite, hangar-bound assets. The Grapen is a product of Swedish strategic thinking, a philosophy forged during the Cold War under the constant threat of a superpower neighbor. Uh, in stark contrast, the F-35 Lightning II is a marvel of American technological ambition. It is a stealth aircraft, a flying sensor node, and a data fusion powerhouse designed to penetrate the most contested airspace on the planet. Saab designed a light single-engine multi-role fighter that didn't require pristine, sprawling airbases. It was built to be dispersed to operate from short, improvised runways and even stretches of public roadway. Its maintenance was designed to be handled by a small team of conscript-level technicians with minimal specialized equipment. This philosophy of resilience and operational flexibility is baked into the Gripen's DNA. It is a machine designed to be used frequently and in harsh conditions, offering a level of readiness and sortie generation that more complex aircraft simply cannot match without an enormous logistical tail. It is an apex predator, but one that requires a very specific, very expensive habitat to thrive. Its suite of integrated sensors and its ability to network with other assets on the battlefield are genuinely revolutionary. However, this unmatched capability comes at a price far beyond the initial purchase cost. When we strip away the cost and look purely at what these jets can do, the picture becomes more nuanced. The F-35's primary selling point is its very low observability, or stealth. This is a game-changing attribute against advanced integrated air defenses. The F-35 was designed to be the tip of the spear, kicking down the door by neutralizing enemy radar and surface-to-air missile sites, so that other, less stealthy aircraft can operate more freely. Its ability to penetrate contested airspace, gather intelligence with its powerful sensor suite, strike targets with precision before the enemy even knows it's there, a capability the Gripen cannot match head-on. The Gripen, however, was never designed to be a stealth door kicker. It is a multi-role fighter that excels at a different, but equally critical, set of missions. An exceptional air-to-air -air platform, particularly with the Meteor long-range missile. For defensive counter-air, the mission of protecting a nation's airspace, the Gripen is formidable. Powerful radar, advanced electronic warfare suite, high maneuverability. It can also perform strike missions. 
anti-ship missions, reconnaissance missions. This raises a crucial question of mission priority for Canada. The RCF's likely day-to-day -day mission is not penetrating Russian or Chinese airspace. It is air policing under NORAD. The weapon loadout presents an interesting trade-off. To stay stealthy, the F-35 carries fuel and weapons internally, limiting payload. In non-stealthy configs, it can use external pylons, but that negates stealth. The Gripen carries a substantial, flexible array on 10 external hardpoints. Diagram. Gripen E versus F-35A loadouts highlighting Gripen's external stores. Air-to-air -air munitions. Air-to-ground munitions. For many scenarios, more missiles in the air is a significant tactical advantage. As of 2025, the F-35A's cost per flight hour remains stubbornly high, with the U.S. Air Force reporting figures that can exceed $36,000. The long-promised goal of $25,000 by 2025 has not been met. In comparison, operators of the Gripen C and Gripen D report cost per flight hour figures as low as $4,700 up to around $8,000. Even the newer Gripen E is projected by Saab to operate for well under $15,000 per hour. This isn't a small difference. It's a chasm. It means a nation could fly three Gripen sorties for every single F-35 sortie for the same cost. This operational cost differential has profound strategic implications. Pilot proficiency is not a given. It is earned through constant, rigorous training. A lower cost per flight hour allows for more flight hours, which translates into sharper pilots, better tactics development, and a higher state of overall readiness. Furthermore, sustainment costs of the F-35 are tied to a US-controlled global logistics system known as ALIS, now Odin. This system dictates mission planning, maintenance scheduling, and parts ordering. While it offers a massive shared supply pool, it also removes a degree of sovereign control. Nations become dependent on this global network, which can be a strategic vulnerability. The Gripen's emphasis on simpler maintenance and fewer proprietary components offers nations a greater degree of logistical independence. That allows for predictable long-term budgeting, and ensures readiness isn't solely dependent on an international supply chain that could be strained in crisis. A fighter jet is only useful if it can fly, and the ease of maintenance is a critical, often overlooked factor in a fleet's combat effectiveness. Design philosophies of the Gripen and F-35 diverge dramatically. Gripen was designed for ease of maintenance in austere conditions. Saab engineers were tasked to enable rapid field servicing, Refueled, rearmed, engine swapped by a small team with standard tools in a remote location. Result? Remarkable turnaround times. A Gripen can be refueled and rearmed for an air to air mission in under 10 minutes, maximizing sortie generation in high tempo conflict. Maintainability has massive implications for Canada, especially Arctic operations. The Canadian Arctic is vast, sparsely populated, with limited infrastructure. Operating from smaller, less equipped forward operating locations is not a benefit. It's a necessity. Grip and advantages. Minimal logistical footprint, shorter runway capability, proven cold weather performance. It does not require specialized hangars, climate controlled facilities, a deep bench of highly trained technicians. This operational flexibility is a strategic asset. The F-35, on the other hand, is a notoriously maintenance intensive aircraft. Its stealth coatings need specialized care, are easily damaged, and need time-consuming repairs in climate-controlled environments. Accessing internal components is difficult. Many repairs require proprietary diagnostic tools and connection to the Odin Logistics Network. Section 6. Pilot in the Loop. Training and Operational Tempo. The most advanced fighter in the world is useless without a highly proficient pilot in the cockpit. The path to creating and maintaining that proficiency is paved with flight hours. Gripen versus F-35. Two very different realities for an Air Force. The Gripen's lower cost per flight hour allows a much more robust training syllabus. More hours in the air mean more practice with complex maneuvers. Weapons employment. Tactical decision making. Pilots move beyond basic qualifications and master the art of air combat. 
they build instinctive skill decisive in a real fight. High operational tempo fosters a healthier, more experienced cadre of instructor pilots. When flight hours are scarce and expensive, as they are with the F-35, training can focus on maintaining currency rather than advancing skills. The F-35 program mitigates with heavy reliance on advanced simulation. Full mission F-35 simulators are incredibly immersive. They can link with other simulators for large-scale coalition operations. That allows pilots to experience scenarios too dangerous or expensive to fly live. Still, there's fierce debate in the fighter pilot community about over-reliance on simulation. There's no substitute for the feeling of G-forces, or the nuances of handling the aircraft at the edge of its envelope, or the real-world friction of a live mission, Sa'a'ab, the Swedish Air Force. Both use advanced simulators, but their philosophy is balanced by affordable real flight hours. Gripen's design eases transition from trainer aircraft. Its flight characteristics are more conventional. The F-35's fly-by-wire is so advanced, pilots say it's like flying a computer rather than an airplane. For Canada, the choice affects the entire pilot production pipeline. A Gripen fleet would train more pilots to a higher experience level for the same budget ensuring a deeper bench of combat-ready aviators for Canada's commitments. Section 7. Politics and Paychecks Industrial Benefits on the Table The selection of a new fighter jet is never just a military decision, it is also a massive economic and political one. For any government, the promise of high-tech jobs, technology transfer, industrial investment. Both Lockheed Martin and Saab offer substantial industrial and regional benefits to sweeten their deals. However, the nature of these benefits differs significantly and reflects the underlying structure of each program. The F-35 program operates as a global partnership. Nations contribute to the production. Nations contribute to the sustainment of the global fleet. For Canada, partnership with F-35 has meant Canadian companies have secured billions in contracts to build components for every F-35 produced. This is a powerful argument for sticking with the program it provides long-term, high-value work for Canada's aerospace industry. However, this work is distributed across a global supply chain, and Canada has no sovereign control over it. The work depends on the overall health of the F-35 program and on decisions made in Fort Worth and Washington. Its participation in a massive industrial machine as a component supplier, not as a prime partner with final product control. Saab's approach is fundamentally different, often more appealing to middle powers seeking sovereign industrial capability. Saab's classic offer, significant technology transfer. That creates a clear political choice for Canada. Continue as a successful but subordinate supplier in the F-35 ecosystem or pursue a partnership that could massively boost domestic primes like Bombardier? A grip and deal could mean final assembly in Canada, integration of Canadian-made components, integration of Canadian software and long-term sovereign control over sustainment and upgrades, a powerful vision for a government championing a national industrial strategy. The political optics are stark. Deepen industrial integration with the United States or forge a more sovereign partnership with a like-minded middle power. Section 8. Canada's Cold Awakening A procurement saga re-examined. Canada's journey to replace its aging fleet of CF-18 Hornets has been long and torturous. The initial commitment to the F-35 by a previous government was derailed by controversy over soaring costs and a lack of a competitive process. This led to years of delay, a new competition, and a political climate where cost and transparency became paramount. The Gripen remained a serious contender for so long, even after Canada announced it would enter final negotiations with Lockheed Martin. That shows how potent Gripen's value proposition is. The Gripen shock is the realization that a logical, cost-effective alternative exists, making it much harder to justify the F-35's astronomical price tag and logistical demands. The reaction within Canada has been a microcosm of the global debate. Defense analysts, politicians, and the public have been forced to confront a simple question. What does Canada actually need its fighter jets to do? The answer, overwhelmingly, involves missions for which the Gripen is exceptionally well-suited. Patrolling the Arctic, enforcing maritime sovereignty, meeting NORAD commitments, the F-35's stealth and deep strike capability, 
while impressive, seem tailored for a conflict Canada is highly unlikely to fight alone. This mismatch between capability and requirement has fueled skepticism about the F-35 choice. Public opinion and political statements in Canada have reflected this growing pragmatism. The debate has shifted from a simple, best is best mentality to a more nuanced discussion of value and operational reality. Leaders who question the F-35 are no longer dismissed as being anti-military. They are seen as being fiscally responsible and strategically astute. Canada's reaction matters on the world stage because it is a respected NATO member and Five Eyes member with serious defense commitments. If a country like Canada seriously questions the logic of the F-35, it gives other nations pause and lends immense credibility to the argument for alternatives like the Gripen. This re-examination is a cold awakening from the dream of owning the most advanced technology at any cost. It is a move toward a defense posture based on practical needs rather than prestige. The Canadian procurement saga demonstrates that even with immense political pressure and the allure of a fifth-generation platform, the fundamental arguments for affordability, reliability, and sovereign control cannot be ignored. The shadow of the Gripen has forced a level of accountability and scrutiny onto the F-35 program that would not have existed otherwise. And that in itself is a victory for sensible defense procurement everywhere. Section 9. The Final Verdict. Pragmatism over Prestige. Canada stands at a strategic crossroads. Its fighter choice will define RCAF capabilities for the next 30-40 years. Two fundamentally different philosophies of air power. The F-35, ultimate technological supremacy, unmatched survivability, and sensor fusion for peer conflict, aligns Canada closely with the U.S. military technological trajectory, deep interoperability in U.S.-led coalitions. The prestige option, fifth generation without compromise. The Gripen, strategic pragmatism, modern, adaptable, optimized for Canada's daily missions prioritizes readiness, tempo, and logistical simplicity. Fiscally responsible, frees billions for other defense needs. Pilot training, naval vessels, army modernization. A declaration of strategic independence, partnering with middle powers. My view, choose practical readiness over headline tech. A larger, reliable fleet to patrol Canada's vast territory. Not a smaller, exquisite fleet Canada can barely afford. The main threats, monitoring Arctic and maritime approaches. The Gripen is built for the cold, dispersed operations, high rates of readiness. Canada should have run a true head-to-head -head in the Canadian North. Measure sortie generation rates, maintenance hours per flight hour, performance in extreme cold. Gripen's challenge is a market correction. Are we buying capability we need or what someone wants to sell? For Canada, the logical answer, pragmatism over prestige, Gripen.